Yes. Right. Um. Thought I'd do a, a render because I've done one for a while. Um. So um, I'm just going to render this up uh, and to try and do it in a quite an efficient way. So that was the in initial sketch. Did it in sketchbook? And then in sketchbook, I just kind of tried to tidy up the wheels so I know where to put the paths in here. And so to kick off, uh, I always double click on that layer to unlock it. Uh, I can actually just get rid of it. Um, I can create a gradient or a solid co colour. I'm just going to create a gradient. And this is basically going to be a background. And so top bar is transparency, bottom bar is colour. And let's just. You can kind of play around with this bar depending on the effects you want to get. And I'm going to go for my normal sort of colour. You'll see there's all these lines in the gradient. Now it's like the banding, just click on Dither and then it smooths them out. So when you zoom in, you can still see them, but when you zoom out, they're less obvious. Okay, turn my guide off drop that on the bottom. So the good thing is by using these adjustment layers I can just go back into here change it if I want to and it updates. Uh, you can also just move the gradient so just whilst this box is activated, you can move it up and down. The gradient itself still stays the same. But it means you can reposition, you can rotate, so on and so on and so on. Let's just put it back to 90. And let's just drop that a little bit. Okay, some background sorted out. And I've got the, the latest version of CC as part of my subscription. So this um, new curvature pen tool. Whilst on a tool, if you hold shift and press the letter for that tool, in this case P for pen. If you hold shift and press P, you'll notice whilst holding shift, it cycles through all the tools. It's quite handy, but I've set my convert point tool to a O as a shortcut, so I can just press. So if I press O, I can use that pretty quickly to uh, adjust rather than having to cover loads of mouse miles by going over here, clicking, holding. Um, so yeah, I've set mine to O. Oops. And as you probably know, I don't ever use paths. Waste of time. As in the paths panel, not path tool. But so got my sketch. And I'm going to start pathing out body of the car basically. So first thing we want to do is I'm using the new curvature pen tool and the main difference is when you click just one click uh, it kind of creates an average arc between your points whereas if you use the old pen tool You get that. You still interact with it in the same way. So if I, 
I've got um, convert point to all on, and I can still manipulate that, and I could still adjust that when I've got my direct selection tool, path selection tool will just select the whole path, direct selection tool will select the point, a single point. If you hold control whilst on this tool and click, it will swap the tool. So you don't have to come over here. So control or command, hold and click, and it will swap it. A and the keyboard is a shortcut for this. Because I, I use shortcuts, I don't do the whole coming across here and pressing everything. So. As you can see here, they're moving. All the shortcuts are covered. Right. Anyway, get rid of these paths. Don't want them. Path tool, anyway. Uh, under normal pen tool or curvature pen tool, whatever you prefer. Um, I'll do it in the, the old pen tool. Just in case you haven't got the latest version. Um, I've got mine set to path. You should have that. Shape you get vector controls basically, so filling, stroke, and you can dotted lines and all sorts of stuff. I always use shape. And every time you, do, by having it on shape, it creates a new shape layer by default. So as soon as you start clicking, a new layer has appeared over here. And I'm just gonna half out the whole silhouette real quick and don't have to be too precise with this because the whole point is you can just come back and change it and tweak and tune to the nth degree so that, that's my uh, path so we get rid of the strokes that's get rid that's a fill that's a gradient pattern it's like cross hatches and all sorts of stuff but I don't want a stroke I just want a gradient fill and this is basically going to create uh, my base layer of my car and as you can see I haven't gone around and I haven't tidied this up which I can do now. So combination of um, selection tool and my shortcut being O, you can really quickly just come in. If you press P, you can get the uh, little plus sign to add a point. And should be able to what was that twelve was that? Right, anyway, so darn that guy. And I'm just going to quickly go around. I'm just going to basically pull some handles. And wherever I want a sharp corner on the convert point tool, I'll just drag that out on the one side so it breaks curvature between the two points. It's going the wrong way around. And the path generally goes in the loop that you created it. So if, if I drag left to right in this case, the handle's on the right side. If I drag the other way, it's not on the right side. So if I've gone this way around the path to create it, that's the way you need to drag your handle. 
Um, so I know just left to right, because I went left to right when I created the path. Vice versa, if you did it the other way around. And I'm just going to go around. Obviously, depending on whatever your sketch is like, blah blah blah. Get all the boring stuff out of the way. Just go and refine whatever need be, drag the points around using a combination of direct selection tool to pick it, convert tool to reset the point, um, but mostly I use direct selection tool because that enables you to move and adjust and move the pivot point and it's just case of getting the curvature just right between every point and as you can see as I'm pulling this around and messing with this on this layer the colour is updating it's like you don't have to keep re-rendering it it's just doing it on the fly basically it's like Illustrator so you get real time. You don't have to select it, paint it, blah blah blah, all that nonsense. The old school way of doing it. You can literally just do it on the fly. Get all the bits. And because it's a shape layer, it's a vector. I don't have to worry about it being perfect first time around. I can come back to this layer. And re tweak and change, and it will all update. So, the point of my workflow is to be efficient and quick. So, when the design director comes along and says, I want to change this or I want to change that, you can just go ahead and tweak without having to re render half the image. Okay, so I've blocked in that. Like I say, you might want to come back later on, blah blah blah. I'm just going to dull these down, these sketch layers. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'll leave that as it is. I'm going to do a new layer for the shadow. Right. Just block in something, and then I'll use my convert parent tool or my keyboard shortcut. And I'll just adjust this accordingly. Set that to whatever I want it to be. Change the hierarchy of the layer. Blah blah blah. If you want to change your shortcut, keyboard shortcuts, then under tools, I go down to direct uh, convert point tool, which is this one, and I change mine to the letter O, because the old letter O used to be dodge and burn, um, but I never used dodge and burn, so. Into the point, and I thought it's right next to P for the pen tool, so I thought it makes perfect sense for me. But you can set it to whatever you want. That's just how I do it, Rob. Me, I'm just keep telling you. So, yeah, because it's a shape there, it's vector based. You tell that by this icon here. So, I don't have to go to my paths panel 
and I don't have the workspace issue of losing paths. Every layer I create has a path and I don't have to worry about losing them because if I lose them, the only way to lose that is by deleting that layer. I can go back to that layer, I can change on the fly, whatever I want it to be. So each layer is essentially a path and it's vector based so you can scale it endlessly and it will never deteriorate quality, pixelate, nothing. So anyway, so the, the next benefit for this being vector based is getting some nice shadow effect on here. It's pretty easy. What I tend to do normally is I duplicate, so I've got the same layer twice. Go to properties, I feather one of these vector layers, these shape layers. So let's just make that quite dark. Uh, cancel that, it's a gradient, so what I'll do, I'll go to the fill whilst on that layer. I'll just go to a solid colour. You can pick a colour that you want, or you can use a colour swatches. I've got quite a few swatches saved off. And I can even right click on this layer that I've just made black. I can copy shape attributes, paste onto the new layer. And then I can even feather that one slightly, not as much as the other one. And I can even have a slight variation between one layer and the other. If you're a, a Gaussian blur sort of guy, what you could do is set that to zero. Right click, convert to smart object. So now it becomes a PSD in its own right. So I can edit this PSD, click save, and be done with it. So it's, just, it's created a new file, basically. So um, this is a smart object. I can apply a filter to that smart object. So I could do a, a Gaussian blur. And let's just crank it up massively. And then what it does, it creates a smart filter. It's this thing here. And I can turn that, that blur off. So if I hide all the other layers. So this is my smart layer, this one here. I can turn that blur on or off. Plus, I can actually double click where it says Gaussian blur. And I can actually adjust and change that on that one layer. And even better than that, on these smart filters, because it's a smart object, you can stack them. So then I can do a a blur, a motion blur, pick the angle that I want, tweak that, turn all the other stuff back on, and I can just turn off the smart filter, and it's all still there. And then this white square here is basically a layer mask, it's basically one of these. So I can paint with black where I want that layer mask to hide the effect of the blur. And then you can play around with your brush settings, opacity, smoothness, and whatever. All on one layer. So there we go, that's that sorted. Shadows, again because they're vector, I can go back in. No one would have created a smart object. Smart object. If I go in here and adjust this one in here, save, close it. It's updated here. Just so you actually see a, a big effect or do something crazy like that save that, go to here, 
and then look, you can see it's done that there, but it's been cut off by the boundary of the image. So if I can crop that, then save that, it reappears. Uh, crop tool is C, uh, this one up here. But I don't want that, so I'll just undo that. Save. So it just means you can kind of go backwards and forwards between them. Um, next thing, these wheels. I'm going to press U on my keyboard, which is the shortcut for all these. I get my ellipse tool. I've got mine set to shape, not path or pixels. So this is going to do the same thing. It's going to create a circle. Holding shift, I'll get a perfect circle. But it's a shape layer. And it's created its own new layer. So what I'm going to do. And with path selection tool, because I'm just command clicking or control clicking to swap tools a free transform so it picks the actual path not a point so I'm just gonna skew rotate and transform to match the ellipse I did in sketchbook that there is good okay so it's still a path mm. Still pick that, blah blah blah. I've got to do another one, so I press U my keyboard for my shortcut. Again, just transform, skew, and so on. I'll do actually, let's just. Okay, so now I've got two two layers. Okay, so two wheels. I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge shapes. Cancel. So if I hide all these layers, this is one vector layer. Okay. And now what I'm going to do. I'm just going to set that to black on the fill. As simple as that. Um, what you could do is you could select both these by shift and clicking with the selection tool. Copy, paste on the bodywork layer. So now on this body layer, I've got all those paths. But if I click on just the wheels with the path selection tool, I can make sure it's a few one at a time. If I click on one path at a time, I can change the hierarchy of that layer. So I can bring that shape to the front or I can send it to the back. Um, I'll, set, I'll bring this one to the front so you can see the difference. Now, if I click on that circle and that circle, I can subtract the front shape from. Uh, the reason why that's gone weird is because this one needs to go backward. So, this one was the layer on top, not. Um, if I send that to the back, same thing happens again. So what it's trying to do is trying to subtract the front shape. But in this case, this circle is not the front shape. So you just have to make sure you bring that to the front. And then voila. So you could do it like that if you wanted to. And then it means um, that the path is still there on that layer. Um, but it means it's cut out that layer if you want to cut it out for any reason at all. Or you can do intersect shapes 
Oj, det är Aston Olsen som säger Jag har bättre combine Sen mätte det back So whatever you choose on here Depends on the hierarchy of this layer um, But all we want to do Kind of subtract And bring this layer To the back Okay um, Then what you could do is for duplicate, so alt drag to duplicate. I've duplicated that layer to there. This one, I'm going to scale these up slightly. Scale this one up slightly as well. And then right click, create clipping mask. And I'm just going to make that say, actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy shape attribute, paste shape attribute. So in this case it's copying the gradient, so I've got the same gradient, but it's it's doing the gradient, it's going from here to here, from here to here. So you get the difference in colour uh, without doing anything, but you can still move it. Let's see, that's just a... Uh, Pump that up so you can see the difference. But I'm still moving it whilst in that tool as well. But I only want it to be quite subtle, just the purpose of YouTube. I just did that. So that's basically over two layers. The top layer, ellipse 2, has given me the flat spot. And because it's a vector, I'll just go back and I can just skew it and reposition. But because it's clipped to this layer, which I'll highlight in yellow, because it's been clipped to that layer, it only shows pixels on the layer below. So if I move that, you can see what it's doing. So it'll only show the pixels of ellipse to based on this pixels of shape one and the benefit of this is, is you can be quite loose and sketchy but at the same time having a really tight render okay so that's my flat spot sorted out I've got the ellipses from earlier anyway plus all the background and even just use a layer mask here. Oops, flip the colour. I do want to flip the colour from black to white. Just press X and they flip. So I'm just going to paint black to hide the bottom of that ellipse. And Creative Cloud Libraries, I'm going to open my Creative Cloud Library with my Adobe um, login. As part of the Creative Cloud, I go to my wheels. And now when I design a wheel, I can just drag that wheel out of my Creative Cloud Library. Bang. Place that on the top. So this is basically a PSD, so if I double click this layer, it will go to the PSD that created this layer, which has got all the layers to create all this. So I've got brushed, I've got lettering, I've got the spokes, logos, level embosses, highlights, whatever. So yeah, whole PSD from the cloud, don't want to save that. But it comes in as one image, it maintains transparency, which is good. And now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to scale that down to where I want it to be. And 
I'm just going to Alt with the Move tool, Alt and drag to duplicate that. Just before I actually skew it and transform it, I want it to duplicate a perfect circle because I'm going to rotate and skew according to the perspective of the sketch. And I'm just going to lay a little bit of tire room. Just do the same with this one. On my shape one, the yellow layer, I'm going to create a layer mask. I'm just going to airbrush out the, the bottom of that car. Just painting black and white on that layer mask to bring that bodywork back, depending on what I want to achieve. Uh, that's my whack on this one out. Uh, I could also just, to be fair, I could just change path to suit. No big deal. Whichever way you want to do it, whatever way you're comfortable doing it. This is, like I said earlier, I can just come back and change on the fly. I'm going to even pull this down, get more stance. relative to the wheels and so on. I'm going to go back to my layer mask and I'm just going to run colour. Paint that out. Put that back. Because I'm masking off the bottom of the uh, car it affects all the clipping masks, so they'll only um, they'll only show based on this one I'm airbrushing on the layer mask. So I just want to knock out the, the harshness at the bottom of the car for now. I can always come back and change that layer mask or that path. And uh, let's go back and tweak this. Bring it up a little bit, get a bit of contrast in there. Okay, go back. Double click it and drag back in. Oh, good. Next thing we want to do. I'm going to drag in right disk, which is a file I've done earlier, which is in a file that I didn't crop for some silly reason. So in this, I've got a circle, and then I've got a duplicate of that circle, and then I've got uh, a pattern from Illustrator. Uh, so if I double click that, it might open Illustrator. Oh no, I copied it into Photoshop. So it's just something I created in Illustrator. Created that one, did a transform, and then revolved it. So they're all vectors. It's like jeweled. So that's just a black layer with a bevel emboss. And then the middle layer is this layer and then converted to a smart object so I could just hard, just have that one um, 
with this is basically a gradient that changes from dark to light, dark to light, dark to light, dark to light, blah blah blah, set to angle. So it creates a gradient around an angle and I can rotate that around if I really wanted to. Then I converted it to a smart object and then added, I'll just turn that off. I added noise first and then I did a spin blur. Uh, so just to show you how I did that. I always keep the original just in case I fuck it up or whatever. So I right clicked convert smart object then filter add noise and then filter blur gallery spin blur and then you get this widget Place that roughly in the middle, change the actual radius of the blur, and I can change the size and shape of the actual spin. And you can see that the white points are where it stops, it's like it's fading out. But I want the whole thing to be blurred, so I'll just max that out. Click OK. Then, as you can see, that, that's blurred the noise that I've applied to that smart object. I can go back to the uh, noise by double clicking on the noise. I can tweak the noise. Click OK, and then it'll update to the new blur. Or I can go to the blur. I can change and tweak the blur and so on and so on and so on. So anyway, that's how I did the break disk. So I've got that in my Creative Cloud library. Oops, didn't want to do that. That should be clipped to the So now I'm just gonna uh, drag that into position. What I will do actually is I'm going to crop this right down because when I three transform the Creative Cloud asset, this break disk and the other file, it basically three transforms based on the um, pixels of this file. So do that. I'll do save. Just hide that. So now if I free transform that now, da -da -da. rather than being the whole canvas, it's just the actual brightness, which is what I want. So that when I skew and rotate, And I'm just going to duplicate that and rotate from that one. There we go. So the bright disk. And then if I added realism and depth, I'm just going to use a layer mask and just paint out where I want shadow cast onto there. So these are my brush presets. I literally just use a standard brush, I never tweak the brushes. Um, I'll just black on a layer mask, get rid of, cast some shadows, basically hiding half the layer with the layer mask. So if you ever want to come back to it, just flip the colour to white, X on the keyboard, you can paint. And then 
Bob casting a shadow on there as well. And one, which is the other one. So just add a line mask. Real quick, just airbrush that in. Go back to my Creative Cloud library, and it's brilliant because the libraries I've got all my colours for my brand all saved off. I've got all my typeface of characters saved. I've got all my vector logos and graphics. Uh, logo brand whatever and for some reason I haven't got these in my uh, correct folder so I just want to move them right move move that to wheels go back to wheels so I can just create a new library. So I've got all my logos, textures, graphics, and textures. I've got carbon fiber and so on. Um, drag out bright caliper. Gosh. And because it comes in as a smart object, it always references the resolution of the original image. So no matter how many times I scale this up, scale it right down, and scale it back up again, it never loses quality. That's the beauty of smart objects and creative cloud files. And if I created the original one in Illustrator, for example, I can open the Illustrator layer as a smart as a smart object in here but the original file if you double click and it goes to illustrator for example and it works across everything in adobe so you've you've got um to duplicate that put it in there okay i'm going to go back to my break discs and I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to airbrush the shadow cast by the uh, break caliper. Just adds a bit of depth. Bosh. Then I'm also going to uh, do the same thing to the break caliper itself. So we get some depth perception and realism to the actual break disc in the caliper and you can see here is a bit of the break disc is coming through so mask that off so there's a break disc there do the same thing on this one On the bright disc again, just to airbrush in the shadow. And to zoom in, and out, it, you notice it's quite free the way I'm doing it. I'm holding spacebar and control, or spacebar and command, and it just allows me to pan in and out. And then, as soon as I let go, spacebar and command, it goes back to the tool I was using. So it doesn't matter what tool, I don't have to press Z on the keyboard. So if I'm on the move tool, for example, or say I'm on the pen tool, I can spacebar command whilst mid pen pinning. 
zoom in and out. Let go, and it's back to that tool again. Saves most miles. It's brilliant. Well, anyway. So there's a large part of the render already done. I've just um, what am I the front wheel? I'm just airbrushing out the, the bottom of the front wheel, just so it's got a better stance and it looks cool. More stylized. So that's all the hard bits of the render done. So from here to here is just wheels. So I'm just group those in a group, a little folder. Um, makes that stand out quite a bit. Oh no, that's bodywork. Just airbrush that out. Get rid. Just tweaking the uh, layer mask. Got some weird highlight coming on. Oops. There we go. Just going to call that wheels. Go back to ID. Drag out the logo, not one, drag out that one, not one, that one, that's the one. Slide that down. Just tweak. That path. On the body. Spot that fit better. Go. Let's drag out the logo. Not the top. Oops. That's just that. So that's the power of the uh, cloud. Now I'm going to turn my sketch back on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new favourite thing of mine it's like a pinched body side so it's just one line it's that shape there and I'll put it on the bodywork I'm going to make that black and then I'm going to change I'm going to keep it stroke aligned on centre I put a radius on the the end of it, so I'm just changing it from square to round. No, I'm gonna make it dotted actually. Why not? Just for the hell of it. Central aligned, round. More options. I'm gonna make that say 50. Okay, if not 50, 30, 25. We'll get 30. So, with more options, you can add a gap and a dash and a gap and blah 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 blah. And then I'm going to change the size of that stroke, which in turn adjusts the, um, the, 
the dash relative to the size of the stroke. So let's just up that again. Try 50. There we go. And I can actually bring this down. And then, oops, I thought I'd just click and add a point in the middle, to just then pull that down to add a bit of curvature to that, pull that one down as well, pull that one up, bit of a, a rising waistline, sill line, whatever it's called, anyway, I'm going to do a double click. I barely embossed that. Not quite as big a boss as that. So that's overlay. Boom. And that is within the clip of the the one layer above that. So by default, it's clipped to the layer below. Now I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm just going to basically airbrush um, some value real loose and because I, I've done that new layer above the yellow layer it's clipped automatically to um, the, layer below, uh, the layer below so as you can see there the pixels only show up based on the layer below it Add some level and mid tones. I can go back into this and I can change these colors because I want more contrast when I add the highlight. And what I want, I want a crease here to go up and create the highlight around the, the dealer. So, just above the one I've just blocked in some value. The purpose of this, I'm just going to real quickly add some darker value on a new layer. This is all raster or airbrushing with the, the pen tool. Uh, so, my brush is quite soft in a minute. I'll do all the harsh stuff later. Let's just get some value difference and I just want to mask off that flat spot there because it's kind of going into the area I don't want it to go into and I just want to fade it out the bottom there as well so I'm masking on the flat spots there we go I'm just going to make that just disappear as well there we go perfect so now I want to do the highlight on the DLO first. So I pen tool by default because it's set to shape it'll create a new layer. And I'm just gonna go in and do this highlight. And it'll be somewhere like so. We'll go around this lamp graphic. Turn the stroke off. I'm going to do a gradient this time. Rather than a, a solid, I'm going to make the gradient white to white. And I'm making one side of it a passive zero and one side of it 100%. So I'm now going to just go with the convert point tool, the pen tools. I'm just going to go around and tweak the shape and form of all of this highlight. So. Oops. 
it's going to be quite accurate, try and be quite accurate with what's happening here. Again, because it's a shape, I don't have to use the stupid paths panel. And I can just keep going. Can add another one here. Tweak until it's absolutely spot on. And which is really important. It's really important to. Uh, Get all your lines just right. So I'm just going to go back into this one. I'm just going to add another point in here to get a bit more control in these radiuses. Where the light graphics going to go? Okay, I'll then just do the other one, which is uh, the brake break light area. Oops, that didn't connect. So, if I to spend a little bit more time on here, be a bit of backwards and forwards, tweaking the line of the body in relation to the line of the highlight and getting it to match depending on what I'm trying to achieve. But for now, I kind of just want to um, get something in there just for the purpose of this tutorial. And I've got to follow this, the shape of the body. So there's a bit of bend in there. But if it, I can refine that later. Just playing with the gradient. And then I want this vent that I created earlier to be like a pinching point. So going to um, make it effectively pinch then add a point in the middle there Just going to basically sculpt the highlight with this one layer so far. Then on the on a layer mask, I can also just kind of hairbrush out what I do and don't want. I don't know how harsh I want that to be. I can make a selection, so this selection by command or control clicking on the layer. So that's made that selection. On a new layer below it, I'm just going to invert the selection, so control shift I. It's inverted the selection, or command shift I. And I'm just going to airbrush.
Restall. What will effectively be the undercut or the shadow, or whatever. And then um, we can come in with a layer mask and just tidy them up. Freehand or I could pack it out, one of the two, whatever you want to do. It's more the um, method. Um, basics on my show rather than doing everything in one particular way. So just tweak and refine that in the actual layer mask. And then so apprentices or brackets open and close make the brush look big or larger and make sure my brush is really soft past is quite low I can just kind of soften that shadow within the layer mask not in the original layer just a layer mask and can then Let's say I want to do the, the white off the rear wheel notch. Just drop that below that previous layer. It's just a white airbrush. Just freehand in that layer there. And I can even use the layer mask and freehand, or you could pack it out. But just to give you a harsh reflection. Just put my past on my brush to a hundred percent. And just real quickly. Lock in a nice harsh reflection. Again, it's on the layer mask, so none of this has been erased or deleted, it's just been hidden. And then where I've got this undercut under these feature lines, I'm just going to do a soft airbrush on the layer mask just to kind of get that negative back in there and to also soften off the, uh, the harshness of that highlight. gonna because all this meets at a certain point it's not gonna be this harsh transition between the dark areas so on this dark layer I'm just gonna airbrush out all this feature just bring some softness back to that Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it 
but all I want to do, I want to just keep all the bottom half of it. So I'm just going to delete those points, pick the pen tool, hover over the point, and just carry on pathing. Like before, I want to get rid of this one, this one. I'm going to add a point here to delete that point. Then I'm going to finish that. And then I'm just going to drag that down. So basically, I've taken the bottom side of that and then repathed it again to give me what's going to create a hard edge, a hot shadow. Again, because it's a shape layer, I can adjust it on the fly. Don't have to select it, path it out, airbrush it, all that nonsense. Let's change the color of that, so I'm just going to make it a solid. And then I could even start playing with. Uh, Layer style, uh, let's do like a color burn. Uh, let's put a multiply, knock it back a bit, duplicate that again. Good, over it. What is underneath? Oops. underneath the white highlight so that highlighting top is always dominant so one of them isn't feathered at all and then the other one is feathered quite a bit so let's pump up the uh, opacity on that And do twenty feather on that one. I could even grab this layer, copy, go to the soft one. As if I'm getting a bit of bleed there, I could paste onto there, and then I can make that to cut away. Let's just drag that in. So it's, it'll still be feathered actually because of no, that didn't really work. <laughs> I could just use that to mask it. Invert the mask so it gets no bleed as soon as I turn that on and off. I'm not getting bleed beyond that white light highlight. On that white, I could even start to play with knocking out some value. As it goes around the corner of the car, I can make that selection by command or control clicking my new raster layer. Add some um, a level of pop and contrast.
top of this leg, just do another airbrush. So this time I'm going to airbrush quite harsh uh, white. So it gives you like the hot spot of the light. Doing this free end, as you can tell. I'm just erasing this one. Okay, we've made this selection and do a similar thing. Even just scale that down a little bit. Soft. I think I'm going to duplicate that. Scale it down. Reduce the feather. Boom. Far side down. I think I need to get some value in this front end. So yeah, just adding some value in shadow areas, which I can then mask off and reposition the file structure to uh, sort out and so on. Combination of harsh and soft airbrush, you get some pretty effective stuff going on. As you can see, pretty quickly, starting to get some good results with some uh, tweaking and fine tuning. And then you could even do photo filter. Let's go for a color. Um, I'll get oops. Get off that brush. Oh, what a low mass this one. Mm. 
そしてあ今日はそうだしあっそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうJust adds that metallic look. Right, last thing before I finish this tutorial is I'll just do the shirt lines. Point isn't small enough. We'll go point five. Then I normally just. Do a white version of that. So that's overlay. And we'll finish with the headlight. So there's loads more detail because after this, but. Move you the techniques to now carry on rendering. Okay, so that's going to be headlight, and then what I normally do, I duplicate, feather one of them, and then add an outer glow to the one that's feathered, 
I'll do it like an ice blue so it's really obvious tweak the size of that and basically I can mess around with the effects of the feathering on that other layer then this one you can even just make it slightly smaller and the top layer is basically the hot spot of the light and super crisp and super sharp could even for the sake of this just duplicate both layers flip horizontal Zoom in, reposition, I'll just move both layers at the same time, and then I can just make both of them red. Change the edge blur on that one to quite a light red, maybe. Change the colour of the red on top. I want that to be a deep red, I think. Uh, so change that one to a slightly lighter red. I think even maybe form that up. Might even make this one a much dark red. No, my red. No, I'll leave it that. You can, you can see what you can do there. And then just add your graphics and so on. Cool. I'll leave it at that. Ah. Uh, 